one of the seven dwarfs. We've actually, there's actually about 21, 22 little glass things that you can see circling their heads. That's infrared transmitters and just underneath them they're infrared receivers. What they do is send out a signal and say, hi, here I am. I'm a seven dwarf robot. The other robots then receive the signals. They're looking around for other robots. And when they see them, when they see a group of robots, all saying, here I am, they get together, they move together. When they're in a group, one of them will be looking around and say, here's a gap, I can't see any other robots, I'm going to be a leader. And off it goes, it's a leader. It sends out a signal saying it's a leader. The others then say, here's a leader, let's follow the leader. And off they go for a little while until one of them gets cornered, says there's a lot of robots, I don't want to be a leader anymore, someone else can do it now. They move around until someone else chooses to be a leader. So what we see is them flocking like sheep. One of them decides to be a leader, and off they go. They've got a number of different behaviours, a number of different ways of acting. They're supposed to avoid hitting obstacles, which is contradictory, it's the opposite to them actually coming together, flocking together. Probably blocking my phone. This is an alien from Solvay. Now what I'm going to show in a minute is uh, Bashful. Bashful is no, oh, but as Bashful is just having a battery given to him, so he won't be a bit shy at the moment. But Bashful, and I've placed Bashful in the ring here, Bashful will not know how to avoid hitting things. He'll know that he has to move around. He'll know that he's got some wheels that he can move around, but he won't know what to do with his wheels so that he doesn't hit things. So he's got to learn. It's very much like a, a baby learning to walk. He'll have to learn how to move around without hitting things. So if, if we can pull all these out of the ring, so we go for it, and then, then we'll put Bashful in. to a basic goal, if you like, to move around and he knows that he can move his wheels. But he doesn't know how to combine the things together. He doesn't know, if I want to move forwards, I have to move my wheels in this direction or that direction. He's no idea about that. He's got to learn that. So when I switch him on, there, a, a robot is born. You see, he's just trying random things. He's supposed to be just moving forwards but he's got to learn how to do that. We never know when we switch him on what he's going to do. Sometimes he does it okay, sometimes he doesn't go very well. Just, just like with children, sometimes they learn okay. All the children here, of course, are very hard workers and learn a lot, but uh, he's not doing too bad at the moment. He's not hit anything yet, but in a way he needs to hit things to learn not to hit things. So he's, he's testing out. He, he doesn't really know what to do when he comes up. Oh, there we go. So he's not supposed to do that, but he has to learn not to do it. And there he's hesitating. He was moving forward. He should, should just, when he's learned, he should just move forward. He shouldn't hesitate like that. Now, this is, there he's standing still. He's got a nice little, nice little touch. So he's trying to learn to move forwards and sometimes he's thinking to himself, well if I move forwards I might hit something, so I'm not going to move forwards, I would stop for a second. But then he's got the goal to move forwards again, so off he goes. So he's doing quite well now, you can see him moving forwards fairly well. 
still not getting out of corners, he's, he's still struggling around a bit. But he's certainly, the moving forward bit, he's learned. Seems to do very well at that. And circus bike, down here. Teachers are big proud of him. Hesitation there. So if, if you felt before now robots are just programmed to do particular things and that's all they do, well, that's a load of rubbish, don't believe that anymore. What you've just seen is a robot that's got some basic instincts, some basic goals, but it has to learn how to achieve those goals. And what you've just seen is it learning. And it's not that it's performed very well, we're delighted with it, it doesn't usually, sometimes it learns just to stand still and it stops moving. It really gets scared, if I do move I'm going to hit something, I'm not going to move. It's done very well this time. There we go, thank you very much. And a big hand for the basketball one, I will appreciate it. If I was loving David, this is artificial intelligence from the bottom up. You've heard of artificial intelligence using giant computers with millions of lines of programming, and they send you a gas bill for three million pounds. Right, we can send the bill for three million pounds, but we don't. In fact, if anybody's in the but these are what we call artificial intelligence from the bottom up. If you understand how an earthworm is intelligent, if you understand how a slug is intelligent, if we can direct them to evolve without having to kill them off and have hundreds of generations and hundreds of species die, we can teach machines to become progressively more and more intelligent. And you can see that happening before your very eyes. Yeah, well, I'll just say one or two other things. What, what I'm going to show in a second is uh, the sort of blocking instinct, so you can see that a little bit more. Um, the other things that we're not showing here, but the other things that the robots can do, um, these robots, when the batteries go low, they can detect the batteries have gone low, and we have a charging station which by the same way that they communicate, they can pick up a signal that says there's a charging station and off they go and charge the batteries off. They dock in the station and charge the batteries off. It's very much like a McDonald's for robots. So off it goes, fast food, charges itself up and moves away again. But it, it's working towards, if you like, a self-sufficient robot. It can move around in its environment, know when it needs to charge itself up, go and charge itself up and off it goes again. Even with this robot, each time it learns, it, it gives different behaviours. Sometimes it learns when it comes to a corner, I'll do this. The next time it learns something else. So every time we've switched it on, it's a different robot, dependent on what it's learned, dependent on the environment in which it's learned. If we start it off and close it down, if we don't give it a good environment in which to learn, it'll stay confused, it'll be hesitant, it won't be able to operate uh, as Bashful has now. We gave him a nice open environment, he learned very well. If we didn't do that, he'd stay confused, he wouldn't be able to perform anywhere near as well as he has. And he really is doing well. But let, let's have a look, put the blocking robots in and we'll see how they go. Thanks Kevin, this is Bashful. On the robots, if you think you, can, you know what's alive, but can you define life? Do you know what life is? Mm -hmm. Most people, philosophers, cannot define what life is, they cannot define what love is, they cannot define what intelligence is, they cannot define what uh, consciousness is. And if you can't even now define what life is, you're in trouble. Soon we may have robots which we would be able to convert to life. So, Kevin, could you explain what uh, the robots are doing? Right. Well, I think as usual, we've got one robot that seems to be playing up a little bit. He's obviously, he was working all right earlier this morning. I think uh, the copy break has not suited him well. Um, it's, it's a little case of old age or uh, 
completely exhausted, I think, with the robotics event. But what we can see the other robots doing, I'm afraid they get, they get stuck on the mat occasionally, so the batteries are, are dragging on the ground. But what we see is them flocking together. They're all coming together now. They're trying to avoid hitting things. That's a, a, a basic way of operating. But at the same time, they can see they want to flock together. They want to come together. So they're trying to avoid hitting things, but at the same time, try and come together with each other. When they do, one robot will decide it is going to be the leader. Now what we've got here are two groups. We ended up with two leaders. So we've got sort of buying camps. But now one has broken up and one of them's come back. We've got again two groups for a moment. And in a moment we'll probably hopefully have just one group. You can see how in, in life if you uh, relate this to humans where you get uh, a leader who happens to be in the right place